Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel, and in today's video I'll present the third and final tutorial on workflow before it became series shortcuts. It didn't change much aside from the rebranding, so the basics are almost exactly the same, but I will point out some differences as we go along. In this video, I'll do a step-by-step -step explanation of my favorite complex shortcut, Dictate for Directions. Just keep in mind that a workflow is the same as a shortcut in today's app. So there are some great workflow tutorials on YouTube that are fantastic and that taught me quite a bit. What I really wanted though was a step-by-step -step guide walking me through a complicated workflow telling me everything that workflow was doing, including all of the inputs and the outputs. I didn't find this, so now that I have a slightly better grasp of how workflows work, I'm going to do one myself. My two previous videos are a tutorial style explainer on workflow, actions, inputs, outputs, and variables. If you don't already know these basic concepts, I suggest you start with these videos before watching this one. In this video, I'll break down my favorite and most complicated workflow that I've created and let you know what's happening at each step of the process. So, I'm a mother of two teenagers, neither of whom is driving independently yet, so that means that I spend a lot of time in the car driving them and occasionally myself to practices, social activities, and events. I have a terrible sense of direction, so I rely heavily on Google Maps, both to determine the quickest way to get to places and for estimated arrival time. Most of the time I'm in the car by the time I need to look up directions, so I wanted to create a workflow that was simple and required very little typing on my part. The workflow that I'm about to go through has five options for directions, and each one has its own automation path. So here are the five options. Number one, home. So this just gives directions to my home from wherever I happen to be in Google Maps. Two, today's appointments. So this brings up all the appointments on my calendar where I've put in a location. Once I choose a location, it gives directions to that location in Google Maps. Number three, business name. So this allows me to dictate a business name like Starbucks, for example, and it brings up a list of matching businesses close by. Once I've chosen from the list, it gives directions to that from Google Maps. Number four, contact. So this allows me to dictate a first name. It brings up a list of all contacts with that first name. Once I've chosen from the list, it gives directions to that contact's address. And finally, number five, address. So this just allows me to dictate a street address and then gives directions to it. The very first action in this workflow is choose from menu action. So this action actually just allows you to set all of the options that you want the user to choose from. You can see that I've put the five menu items here. The prompt is the question that you can ask. Um, you can choose to ask when these options are presented. So I didn't need a prompt, so I'm gonna leave that blank. The choose from menu action takes each option that you enter and creates a workflow stream for each one. So I'm gonna show you with a blank one. So, okay, so then for every stream, you populate the actions that you want to happen for each menu item. The subordinate actions are indented slightly under the menu item. So if I scroll through this workflow, you can see that each of the menu items has its own stream of subordinate actions. So let's start with the first menu item, home. This is the most straightforward menu item and probably the one that I use the most. Okay, so the first thing I do is I set my home street address that I want to pass to the next action. The second action is to take the address passed from the last action and show directions. It allows me to choose in advance whether I want to use Google Maps or iOS Maps, there is no comparison for me, and what mode of transport I'll typically use. Okay, so let's run this and choose the home option. The next option is today's appointments. Okay, the first action here is find calendar events where. The output of this action is going to be all of the events that are in my calendar that fit the criteria that I provide. So here is the criteria. The start date is today. You can also choose another date or a range of dates. Um, I want to make sure that I only pick calendar events where I have the location filled in. So I pick the field. There are all of these fields to choose from. And I only pull events with something in that field. So location is anything at all. And then I choose how I want this list to be sorted by start date from our oldest to newest, and I decide not to limit the number of choices. So if I wanted to limit, I would toggle this on. So now that I have all the events from today with a location, I'm gonna pass those events to the next action, which is to choose from a list. So meaning that this action presents my list of events to the user and requires um, them to make a choice. There is an option to allow multiple choices, but I just want the user to select one. 
So once that elect, uh, event is selected, it gets passed on to the next action, which is get details of calendar events. So events are made up of lots of pieces of data. We need to pull out just the location. So this is the action that takes an event as an input, pulls out the location address from that event or whatever other piece of, of uh, data you wanted to pass on, and then passes that to the next action. So the show directions action takes the location address from the last action, launches Google Maps, and shows the direction from your current location to that address. So let's just reveal all of the magic variables so I can show you what variables are being passed from one action to the next. First, a bunch of calendar events, then the chosen item, in the, the, this case of an, an event, then the details of the calendar events, in this case, the location address. And here, let's just run this one and you can see how it works. So these first two options are the ones that I use the most by far. Okay, the next menu option is business name. So the first thing I do is get some text into the workflow just by putting in a text action. So I just type in the text to pass to the next action, which is to speak text. Because I'm mostly running these while I'm in a car, I don't wanna have to do a bunch of typing or reading text, so I want this action to speak my question. The speak text action will say out loud whatever text was delivered to it in the first action. I have the rate and pitch set, and I have chosen to wait until the speaking is finished to go to the next action, which is to dictate text. So this action is a way to get your dictated text into your workflow. So first the workflow says, what's the business name? And then it brings up a dictation window to accept the spoken answer. Now the text that's been dictated is passed to the next action, search local businesses, which is a maps action. So I enter a criterion in this action that I only want to search in a seven mile radius. The action comes up with a list of businesses that match that criteria, the specified keyword in a seven mile radius, and passes those businesses results to the next action. The next action, choose from list, displays all those businesses and asks the user to select one of them. The business selected by the user gets passed to the next action, get addresses from input. So this action pulls addresses out of lots of different kinds of input, in this case, a business, and then passes that ad address to the next action, which is show directions. So let's just take a look at the flow of data using magic variables. And I'm gonna choose this in the menu and show you how it works. What is the business name? The next menu option is similar, contact. So here I do a similar combination of actions to speak the question and have the answer dictated back. This time the question is what is the contact's first name? So then I feed the dictated text into an action called find contacts where, which pulls out my contacts that meet that criteria. That first name is the text passed through as input. Then those contacts are passed through to the action, choose from list, which requires the user to choose one of those. The chosen contact is packed, passed to the action get details of contacts, which pulls out the address from all of the details in the contact and passes that to the next action, show directions, which opens Google Maps and shows directions from current location to that contact's address. Again, let's just take a look at the magic variables to see what info is getting passed from one action to the next, and I'll run it to show you how it works. What is the contact's first name? Okay, the last menu item was address. Basically, this one just allows me to dictate a full street address and have the direction show up in Google Maps. I input the text for the question, what is the address, to pass to the speak text action, which speaks the question um, that I've put in. Then, I bring up a screen to accept dictated text info using the dictate text action, which I pass to the next action, show directions, which open Google Maps and presents directions from my current location to that street address. Here's how that works. What is the address?
So that's that. I really wanted to do this kind of a step-by-step -step explanation of a workflow as I was learning. So I'm hoping this video will be helpful to some people. Let me know what you think. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.